I don't know about you, but I've been finding that life during COVID-19 has just been revolving around coffee. Well, my life kind of revolved around coffee before COVID-19. But this simple pleasure has kind of been keeping me going. Last week, I opened the top of the coffee machine, put in the pod, and then tried to close it again. And it got stuck. The red light was flashing. Initially, it was panic. And then I realized that the bin at the back of the coffee machine, the one that holds all the used pods, was full. And the last pod that I'd used had been the one that got stuck. I tried to reach in and dislodge that stuck pod, but the machine was now half open and half shut and it was all my fault. What if now I can never make coffee again? Up came the anger and I banged my clenched fist on the bench. As I was about to wrestle the damn thing open, my son calmly wandered over and he said this, hang on, hang on, just back away from the coffee machine. Let me do it so you don't get too angry and break it. It was tough, but I took in a massive in-breath and then slowly released it and stepped back from the machine. I'll tell you what happened next at the end of the video. Hi, I'm Dr. Stan Steindl, and today I'm going to talk about anger and what lies behind it. Along with sadness and anxiety, anger is one of the big three emotions. And it's an interesting one because unlike the other two, it feels powerful, energizing and strong. Unfortunately, it can be difficult though too, causing us various problems, not least when it results in outbursts or aggression or violence against material objects, but perhaps against other people or even against ourselves. Sometimes this can be very difficult afterwards as well because of the damage that the anger might cause, breaking things, scaring people, feeling guilty, embarrassed or ashamed. Often our angry behavior just doesn't fit with the kind of person that we would really want to be. Now, while anger can be destructive, like all emotions, this is not our fault. It arises out of our tricky brains that were designed to help our species survive. The key is to take responsibility for the brains that we've got and how they work and bring awareness and understanding to our anger. Can you think of a time recently when you felt angry? What was it like? What did you notice about the feelings or thoughts or physical sensations that came along with your anger? What was the focus of your attention? And what did you notice about your actions or your urges to act? For me, the most prominent is the physical state of anger and the urge to lash out. My son was right to intervene. In an angry state, it can be very difficult to act in considered, constructive or helpful ways. For example, often things seem to be thrown in anger. Mobile phones, eyeglasses, dinner plates, all common victims of these angry urges. Without my son's intervention, perhaps the coffee machine might have become a victim too. But also, What's behind the anger? Often it's the more vulnerable emotions. In fact, often it's sadness or anxiety. We don't want to feel vulnerable. And so anger comes to the fore. It has a threat protection motive, sometimes protecting us from an external threat and sometimes protecting us from the threat of our own vulnerable emotions. And it can often depend on how our anger was responded to by others, especially when we were growing up as children or teenagers. For example, when we felt or expressed anger, 
were we rejected or shamed? The little boy whose parents would send him to his room and leave him there for ages, even at the slightest angry outburst. Or perhaps anger worked in certain ways. The little girl who ruled the roost with her anger and always got what she wanted. Or our own anger was only ever responded to with anger from someone else. Our anger was always punished. There are many combinations. It's useful to understand our own anger and to understand what lies behind that anger and perhaps how early life experiences shaped our relationship with angry feelings. Dr. Russell Coltz, a clinical psychologist and professor of psychology at Eastern Washington University, has written extensively about anger and the way we can work with our own anger through cultivating the compassionate mind. He has an entertaining and super informative TED talk about anger, compassion, and what it means to be strong. It's absolutely well worth watching, and I'll post a link in the comments below. In his TED talk, Professor Colts invites us to bring to mind a situation where we had struggled with anger, but to look back on that situation from the point of view of the compassionate self. Your ideal compassionate self has the wisdom and strength and courage and commitment to be helpful to do just this, to understand the angry self, what it's like to be angry, and perhaps what might lie behind that anger, as well, of course, as the way that our anger has been shaped by our early life experiences. This is the competency of the compassionate mind to build an empathic bridge to our angry self, de-blaming and de-shaming. What might the compassionate self say to the angry self? Perhaps words of acknowledgement or validation, or words of comfort or reassurance, or perhaps encouragement towards our values and what to do to live a values-directed life. And then in this moment of anger, what might my most compassionate version of myself do next? While not my ideal compassionate self, luckily I had my compassionate son come alongside my angry self in the coffee machine incident. He stepped up courageously, I was angry after all, and then with wisdom and a commitment to be helpful, he calmly asked me to step back and he fixed the coffee machine. And so the coffee machine lived to see another day. Isn't it great when our children are our best teachers? So anger is just one of the big three emotions. And it's a bit seductive because it helps us feel powerful and strong. And even though it can be destructive, none of this is our fault. We just want to take responsibility for ourselves in those angry moments and bring in compassion. After all, while anger can feel strong, compassion is strong and grounded and calm and wise and kind. As Professor Colts might say, compassion is what it truly means to be strong. And so, with true strength in your corner, I wish you all the very best on your compassionate journey.